Hello, everyone. It's very honored to have you here during this lightning talk today. This is spoken from the TechV community. I'm an infrastructure engineer at PINCAP, also a core contributor to the TechV project. Besides, I'm a maintainer of Titan, which is a RocketDB plugin for key value separation inspired by Whiskey. I'm going to give a presentation of how we support TTL in TechV. First, what is TechV? TechV is an open source distributed transactional key value database. It became a graduate since that project last year. So far, we have over 9,000 stars and 300 contributors on GitHub. And there are over 1,500 adopters in production across multiple industries worldwide. TechV is based on the design of Google Spanner and HBase but simpler to manage and without the dependency on any distributed file system. Uh, here is a picture showing the overall architecture of TechEV. The full data range is split into small areas called region, and there are three replicas in region by default. The replicas are scattered around into different TechV nodes and keep constant by route. The placement driver stores the metadata of regions to provide clients with region routing information. And it is also responsible for auto sharding and the low balance. TechEV use RocksDB as the underlying storage engine. On top of that, it provides horizontal scalability and high availability based on Raft. And unlike other traditional NoSQL systems, TechEV not only provides classic cookie value APIs, uh, here we call it uh, RockEV but also both optimistic and pessimistic distributed transaction, namely transaction KB. Besides, it imposes the Copacizer API, which is similar to HBase to support the distributed computing. And it also provides the ability of elastic scheduling and geo replication. For TTL, we talk about is mainly supported in the Rookie way. Okay, what is TTL? TTL stands for time to live, which means data will be deleted automatically when out of blood time. In minor user cases, the value of the data is highly temporal correlation. As time goes by, the value of the data declines. User may need to delete data manu manually, periodically, which caused uh, extra overhead. With TTL, the data can be dropped in the database automatically without any mental burden. As mentioned before, TechEV is built on top of RocksDB. RocksDB supports TTL natively, but with the a limitation that all keys should be of the same TTL, whereas there is demand to set different TTL for each key, and some keys are of non-TTL, that is to say the mixture of TTL with non-TTL. Besides, there's no guarantee that the expired entry won't be returned and no API to query how long the TTL left for one key in RocksDB. 
to meet the demand, we decide to support TTL in tech TV instead of using RocksDB's TTL feature directly. Here comes the first question. Where to put the TTL information? There's no metadata for K, so it's just uh, appended as eight bytes to the value. When writing TTL, Type TV calculates the desired uh, expiry Unix timestamp by adding TTL to the current uh, Unix timestamp. And when reading the K, TechTV checks the expiry timestamp to see if the current uh, timestamp exceeds that. If yes, it returns not found, just like the key is deleted. Otherwise, it returns the value with striping the timestamp. Since uh, that's all for it, but in the distributed system, we should take uh, linearizability into account. The check in the clock in different uh, Tech TV instance may not be synchronized. Consider the case of getting an expired key on the leader. The leader is transferred to another instance with a slow clock due to some reason, such as crash. A second get on the key may return value, then we, which breaks the linearizability. In this case, we can utilize the global metallic increasing timestamp dispatched from the placement driver, which is used for transaction. Though considering the performance overhead, it's not used by default. Now we get the TTL functionality but uh, how can the space be reclaimed? For background information, data in RocksDB are organized in multiple SFT files, and the compaction is to merge, this, to merge the old files into newer ones. So we'll, we leverage the compaction filter of RocksDB to lazily drop the expire the entries in the precise of compaction. The compaction filter goes through the key and the value and checks the expiry timestamp in the Unix timestamp. If it exceeds, just uh, drop the key value. In this way, we can do the slate recognition without any extra read and write. But there's uh, still a problem. What if compaction is not wrong on some SFTs yet? The space reclamation may not happen in time. To solve that, TechTV utilize the user collect property of RocksDB to record the maximum expiry timestamp in each SST. With that, a worker called TTL checker checks the status of SST one by one periodically. If the max expiry timestamp exceeds the current timestamp, it triggers the compaction manually by RocksDB Compact Files API to perform the compaction filter logic thus most of the expired uh, entries are promised, promised to be dropped in time. Okay, that's all for this talk. Hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in Type TV project or have questions, feel free to contact us through the following channels, including Twitter, GitHub, and Slack channel. Thank you, everybody.